Yo, what's going on guys? Tactics here, bringing you guys a really quick tutorial. I've had a couple requests on my render settings and how to get high quality images to render as fast as possible. So I'll get right into it. So we got a fresh page right here in Cinema 4D. And right off the bat, you can either click the render settings right here, just go to render, edit render settings, same thing. And these are the default settings. I usually my output I just go to screen and then follow it up with the 1280 by 1024 because that's pretty close to the size of a normal YouTube banner. So at that point you get uh, a nice, nice size which you don't have to upscale too much so you don't compromise pixels and quality. And then also resolution right here, I just tend to bump it up to 100 just so I get a little less pixelation when I, if I do need to upscale the image. Then in my save settings right here, format TIF is the default, but I don't like that too much. I always go with PNG and then select alpha channel. And so then this combination allows you to have, uh, for example, I would insert a cube right here and then render that. All I'm gonna be left with when this is over is just the cube, no black background. And so if you don't select this alpha channel right here, you'll actually end up having uh, the black part as part of your render and so I like to have just What I've created as my image and not the entire background, but that's up to you So you can just check uncheck that whether or not you want to have a background Then when it comes into the options for making things look good You can go to effect and occlusion and so this helps to make some more accentuated uh, shadows and I really like this option. Now, I'm going to warn you that it does kind of up the render time rather significantly, especially when you pair it with global illumination. But putting them both together is probably the best way to get a high quality render, especially once you add some decent lighting on your <clears throat> on your Lightroom. And global illumination is kind of uh, strenuous on your render, but just so for some people, if you really feel like your computer can't handle it and it's way, taking way too long, you can, there's a little trick for this. So you can just go into your iridescence cache right here. And then where it says record density, just bump that down to low. Or even, you can even go lower than that if you want. But essentially that's just gonna help you a little bit just to make your render times a little bit shorter. And I wouldn't really mess with anything else because it seems like that's what's been working for me up until now. Then lighting, uh, I would usually stick to some basic lighting, not anything too complicated because the more lights you add, the more it's going to take to render all the shadows, blah, blah, blah. So what I tend to do is get a light or a spotlight and then just pump, apply it onto a cloner. And at that point, you can just clone that into radial, bump it up and then you can just mess with all the different settings to fix it to however you want, something like that. And then if I were to render that out, it's very quick and that's already much better than what we started off with. So I would use basic lighting, try to follow these settings are really basic, but this is what been, it's what's been working for me. If you feel like you've got a stronger PC and you can sort of handle a bit more than that, you can go ahead and go to your anti-aliasing change it from geometry to best and then bump up your max level to as high as you want that's gonna greatly increase the quality of your image and uh, also for your global illumination you can change that to high and that'll really improve the quality as well but keep in mind that every little option you change in here is gonna probably multiply the, the render time so <clears throat> be careful when you're doing that but just test it out this is what I've been doing, really basic settings, not much else to this. Maybe one last trick is that if you feel like uh, you want maybe even shorter render time, I'm not entirely sure what you give up, like uh, what kind of quality or anything like that you give up when you change this option, but I've noticed that it drastically reduces render times, is changing your renderer from standard to physical. And essentially when you've got a big image, so maybe with a deformer or something like that, so displacement, I mean. I'll just make a quick example. Let's see if this works. 
Okay, like that, really quickly. Uh, something random like that. Apply it. If I were to render this out, cubic seamless. Let's see. So that's the global illumination at work. It's all the little dots. And so this is quite a bit faster. Obviously the, the lighting is very, very terrible right now. So it doesn't take too much to do this. But when you've got a proper light room set up and you've got a lot of different objects and textures, it might help you to just set this to physical. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. It's a very simple video. I just wanted to show you guys my render settings and what I've been using this entire time. So hopefully you enjoy it and I hope this works out for you. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want next as a tutorial. I'm running out of ideas and uh, yeah, so hopefully this helped you out. If it did, make sure to drop a like and a comment. Greatly appreciate all that. So yeah, have a nice day guys.